The most precious things in speech are the pauses. A key to being a powerful and engaging speaker is to intentionally use the power of pause. In this live stream session, our guest speaker Joe Evans will share with you many benefits of pausing for both your audience and for you as a speaker. It's a strange and wonderful how a moment of silence can be so powerful. And once you become aware of the many ways you can use the power of the past, you can easily use this technique to improve and enhance your speaking in a whole range of situations. Ms. Cho is the owner of Cho Evans. Share the message. She works with individuals and groups to help them develop a wide range of wonderful public speaking and present presentation skills to address their fears, enabling them to present their message in a professional, engaging, and inspiring way. She is an experienced public speaking and presentation skills trainer and coach, TechX speaker trainer, presenter, distinguished toastmaster, life coach and teacher and a Harry Potter fan. Hello, Miss Cho. Welcome to our show. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Thank you for the lovely welcome. Thank you, Miss Cho. <laughs> so let me tell you about the power of the pause. Anne, would you like to ask me some questions or so I just chat myself? So let me tell you about the power of the pause and why I think it's so amazing for you all. There's a beautiful speech, which is that the most precious thing in speeches are the pause. Great. Thank you so much for helping me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you disappeared there or not, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. What exactly do you mean when you say the power of pause, Miss Miss Jo? Well, I think so. To just say that quote again, the most precious thing in speech are the pauses. And there's another great quote around pauses, which is, "The right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a rightly timed pause." And I think that intentionally using long or short pauses in our speech for a whole variety of reasons can be amazing and it's so beneficial as you said earlier in the introduction to both you as a speaker and also to your audience and therefore i think just pausing actually deserves the grand title the power of the pause mm, i see uh, i got your point and how is it important when you speak well, I think it's important in two different ways. So maybe I could consider, first of all, from the speaker's point of view. Mm. I kind of, I love this topic so much. I've come up with about nine key benefits, I think, why as a speaker, it's so amazing. Now, in the light of what I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to pause for a moment and ask all of you who are listening now or listening in the future to this live stream, what do you think are some of the benefits for the speaker when they pause? I think the best way is just to think about the next point. So in case we are stuck at the next point, we don't know what we are going to say, we just pause. That is the first part of it. I love it, definitely. So I love that way, pausing for that time when you might suddenly think, what am I gonna say next? And by just pausing, you give your brain a moment to catch up or a moment to suddenly go, yes, I know what I'm going to say next. And it doesn't have to be a very long pause. And I think people feel even just stopping for a moment makes them somehow look weird. But no, I think it gives them the chance to remember what they want to say next. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I guess the most important one for me, one of the most important of my nine, is about breathing. I know that lots of people, you know, in my public speaking work, in your public speaking work, Aunt, we know that people come to us to be trained because they're fearful of speaking, aren't they? 
Yeah. And I think taking that pause at the beginning to breathe mm. and just stop gives you the chance to look confident. Yeah. But more than that, it stops you doing what I'll demonstrate now. Because I think a lot of speakers do this, don't they? Let me go. This is my bad role play. Hi, everybody. My name is Joe. I'm here today to tell you about the power of the pause. And I'm talking really, really fast and I can barely breathe. And in a minute, I'm going to collapse because I don't know when to stop. And I'm looking really, really anxious. And in a minute, I'm going to run out of breath. I didn't look confident, did I, Anne? Did no, I look not really, not really. <laughs> Whereas if I was to come and go, the power of the pause. Mm. That's what I want to talk to you all about this morning. I'm guessing I looked a whole lot more confident then. Yeah. Because I just paused. Mm. And people think that pausing, so I suppose my point is that pausing really adds. Okay, so we've addressed two points. One is to remind ourselves if we forget what we want to say. Mm -hmm. Two is to breathe, and so we look more confident and can just take a moment to fill our lungs with air so we can talk. I see. Miss Miss Cho, would you like to introduce yourself one more time? And at the same time, you can use pauses so that we can see the effect of pause in speaking. I will. Yeah. I became a public speaking coach for a very important reason mm. and a sad reason because when I was at school I was very badly bullied and I think my voice was really pushed down by the bullies who made me feel mm. bad but now what I want to do is not only to share my message and talk and feel confident to do that mm. I want to help others who are maybe nervous of speaking or want to get their point out mm. that they can do that. So I work with individuals and groups. So some of the techniques I just used there, one of them was about the sort of pause before you say something to build anticipation, which was before I said why I got into public speaking because of being bullied. And then the other one would be to sometimes pause afterwards to kind of give that emphasis. So now I could say something like this. Yeah. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that was the step I took when I started my public speaking company. So what I was doing there was pausing to kind of give that emphasis, the importance, and also to give people time to take on that quote and that mm -hmm. idea. Is that the kind of thing you're you're talking about there? Just using using pauses. So that's I think we've now used about five different pauses. I've got four others. Am I allowed to say them too, Arm? Or am I, sure, sure. Am I giving too many reasons about why I love pausing? When I told my husband that I was going to talk to you about the power of the pause, he went, your specialist subject, Joe." <laughs> I love it. I really think that with all the different speakers I work with, in a way, it's, it's the easiest way to look more confident, to mm. differentiate your public speaking from others. Mm. So I guess... I want to remind people, I'm going to be a bit weird now. Arn, you mentioned that I liked Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I did. You like Harry Potter? I just know about that, but I'm, okay. I'm really right. a fan. But you've heard of Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, I know about Harry Potter. <laughs> All right. So sometimes when I'm doing my public speaking, yeah. I will suddenly say to people something like, what is your greatest wish? <laughs> Now, this is my Harry Potter wand. It isn't truly a Harry Potter wand, but it is a very magic wand. Mm -hmm. The point I want to make here is that I paused after I spoke. And when we pause, it also allows you as a speaker to just scan your audience, whether we are face-to-face -face or mm -hmm. online, like you and I are now on, and I can watch your reaction. Now, if I was busy talking all the time and I was going, what's your wish, blah, 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 
I would almost miss your smile there. So sure, I sure. want people to remember that mm. pausing allows you as a speaker time to just check. Mm. Are my audience okay? Am I saying the right thing? Mm. Are they looking surprised at seeing my magic wand? And I think the other three reasons that I think pausing is great for as a speaker, and I haven't even gone to the audience bit yet, is that if you think about when you're reading a book, mm. when you pick up a book, you mm. have full stop, commas, full stops, paragraphs, yeah, right. pages, new chapters. Yeah. In the same way when we're speaking, we need to use what I think I might call vocal punctuation, mm -hmm. which allows you, as well as your audience, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a moment, mm -hmm. to sort of split things up into different sections, isn't it? Yeah. Because right. otherwise there is the danger of being that speaker that I was imitating at the beginning, who just keeps talking all the time and goes from one section to the next section, and the audience have no idea when one mm -hmm. idea has become another idea, Yes, I can. Okay, my last two. Am I allowed two more? Two more wishes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two more wishes. This one I love. Mm. I'm a real fan of asking questions to start a talk in the middle of one at any time because of that engagement it gives you with the audience. Mm. I think that when you have a conversation with your audience, even if it's just a rhetorical question, mm. it helps the speaker to feel less nervous, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. So let me give you an example of a rhetorical question. Um, okay, here's what one I might ask. Mm. Have you ever procrastinated in life? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yes. Now, in that situation, mm. I gave you the space to answer, didn't I? But if I had done this, have you ever procrastinated? Oh, I can't even say the word. Have you ever procrastinated in life? Oh, yes, I expect you have. I didn't give you time to answer, did I? Yeah, you did. But if I say to you in this situation where you can answer, mm. have you ever procrastinated in life? You can either, yeah, you can either answer it, beautiful, or if it's if it truly is like in a big room where you where people are not going to answer, you give people time to think, ah, yeah, I have procrastinated in life. Maybe think of a time when they last did it, and then you have engaged with your audience again. Now here's another example. So and then I'll talk about why I think it's so beneficial. Yeah. So, Anya, I'm not allowed to say anything this time because I'm not going to give you the chance. Are you ready? So, does anyone have any questions? No. Okay, we'll finish now. How many talks have you been to where someone says, are there any questions? All right, I'll move on. Yeah, and like then many, many times. times. It's so disingenuous. It's so rude to your audience, mm -hmm. isn't it? Whereas mm -hmm. now I'm going to let so on. I'll pretend there's a big group here. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions here? Mm. Now, I'm waiting. I'm pausing. Arm doesn't have to ask a question, mm. but I'm genuinely looking like I'm waiting for a question. Mm -hmm. Does anyone yeah. have any questions? Mm. So if you're a speaker and you ask a rhetorical question, like has anyone here ever procrastinated or has anyone here been to Vietnam? Or has anyone got any questions? You must pause after that question. Mm. Otherwise, your audience will think, this speaker doesn't really care about me. They mm. just want to mm. they just want to say their own things. Yeah. I see. I, I got your point. It's just like this the moment for them to really think about your question. And then they will decide whether they got, they're gonna answer it or not, right? Yeah. I mean, mm. wouldn't it be on the same as I if I said to you, how are you? Mm. Oh, I'm fine. Mm. <laughs> You'd know that I wasn't really asking you how you were. Yeah, right. <laughs> many times we ask Go. many Sorry. times we ask people that question, how are you? But actually we don't expect them to tell the truth. Yes, that's true. But that if it's a friend and they don't stop, 
and they don't wait, doesn't that feel a bit weird? Like they don't care? Yeah. I mean, maybe someone in a shop or someone that you're just passing, it's just a politeness, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think all those reasons to pause for a speaker are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I'd actually even cheekily add one more, which mm -hmm. is to repeat them, my first one, which is around breathing. Stopping breathing gives you time to smile, to interact. Yeah. I think all those things were quite easy, but in another way quite hard, because for some people it's hard to pause. But those are those were my thoughts on anyway about for the speaker, why the power of the pause is so brilliant for the speaker. Which one do you prefer the most? Can I just recap them? Because I always think it's lovely, isn't it, to recap. <laughs> so one was about breathing, the importance of breathing. Yeah. to build anticipation if you pause mm -hmm. before something, to emphasize importance if it's mm -hmm. afterwards, to watch your audience, vocal punctuation, to remind yourself about what you're going to say next, mm. asking questions. Mm. And I actually just remembered, I've forgotten my very favorite one. So may I add that in now? Sure, sure, Which just go ahead. Using the vocal variety. I've got so many reasons I forgot. <laughs> Again, I'm going to go back to the speaker, the kind of speaker that we will often have heard, who mm. maybe has a beautiful voice and a lovely mm. manner, mm. and you're listening to them, but you realize their whole talk is at the same speed, the same level of energy. They keep talking in the same way. And if it's a long talk, after a while, you get a little bit hypnotized and perhaps a little bit bored because they keep talking in the same way, just like I'm trying to demonstrate now. I'll take a breath, but I'll keep talking in the same way. Yeah. But that I don't think makes a good speaker. Yeah. We would so often talk about the importance of vocal variety. Mm. And by that I would mean, maybe the first bit I would start talking full of energy a little bit faster, a little bit more active. You can see I'm using my hands. I'm kind of full of energy and I'm saying something that really matters. You're engaging to what you are saying. And then I'm pausing to go, but I didn't always feel like that. And now I'm speaking about something that maybe is a little bit sadder, a little bit more thoughtful. My energy level is different. My face is different. My speed is different. And I think it's that vocal variety, don't you, Anne, that makes a speech interesting and, as you said, engaging. Yeah, I think it's just like the ups and downs moments in, in life. And mm. when it happens in storytelling as well, if a story just happens the same all the time, it doesn't create engagement in your audience. And when you pause, suddenly you talk the emotion and the energy, people feel really special. And they hope that something is coming right now. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah. So, and it's a clever little way, isn't it? It's, it's, mm -hmm. We're not tricking our audience. We're just mm -hmm. playing with all the different tricks that we can use to be engaging, to, to be interesting as a speaker and to mm -hmm. help our audience to enjoy what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. We understand the power of pauses already, Ms. Joel. And people, I think people understand it as well. But what makes them stop from using pauses in speaking? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I wonder sometimes, I feel like the world divides into three groups. I told yeah. you that earlier today I've been working with my, the, um, I was at a TEDx event that I was a speaker coach I, for. I remember. Yeah, and I feel like there are sort of three groups of people. Mm. There's one, the kind of person who just does it naturally, don't they? Mm. They pause they're aware of their audience. You almost don't need to tell them about the power of the pause. They kind of mm. just get it. And then there's the other people, many of whom I work with in my training, and they're interested and they go, oh, I'd never thought about that. You know, for example, when I say, it will really help your audience to go from one section and you pause to the next section, that will really help them. You know what you're saying, but for your audience, it's maybe the first time they're hearing it. Right. And they'll go, oh, I see. I need to pause and I'll go, yes. And if it's a PowerPoint, maybe when you click to the next slide, pause. Mm. And they'll go, yes, yes, I get it, Joe, I get it. <laughs> and, but I have to keep reminding them. And then they kind of go, then it becomes natural. Mm. 
So I think there's that group. But then there is, I don't know about you, Anne, I think there's a really big group, the third group, who will tend to be people who speak fast. And they feel if they go slower, they sound really boring. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, your audience are now understanding you. And if they pause when they ask a question, they feel like it's forever. It's a bit like in an interview when you're asked a really hard question. It maybe feels forever that you're thinking of the answer, but maybe it's like in a moment in real time. And I think those people really need to watch themselves. They need to see that their audience are struggling because they're giving their audience no time to process their ideas, to think about what they're saying. They do a disservice to themselves mm -hmm. and to their audience. So for that group, I literally say, you have got to maybe at least definitely the first time, script your speech. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with you. And you've got to work out where are you going to pause? And you are going to, in your script, write the word P-A-U-S-E. And you will literally stop. And if it needs to be a long pause, you'll write it bold and big. You have to literally plan your pauses beforehand in that practicing, in that preparing. Mm. And I think they need to get the feedback that it is useful, that it is not boring. And I think that group really need to be helped. It's those fast speakers. That's mm. my experience. I don't know, what's your experience of the people who find it hard to pause? Which yeah, some, find it the hard. Learners, some of the learners at EIY usually shared with me that uh, they feel really awkward when pausing. Because with, with that silence, they don't know how to feel in it. And that moment is really scary to them. They don't want to create that silence in their speaking. They want to feel in the emptiness between their speech and the audience. So in this case, what is your advice to them whenever they feel awkward of silence? Well, I guess there's a few things. I mean, one would be to look at some of the best speeches in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Martin Luther King and other amazing speeches. I think if they forget about themselves for a moment and watch someone else speaking, mm -hmm. and when they think, oh, that works really well, they will probably find there were some really good pauses in there. Pauses for emphasis, pauses for the audience to reflect, pauses for people to go to the next section. So I would start by saying, forget about what you're doing, guys. Watch some other people and see what works. And then I think they suddenly go, oh, actually, pausing is important. It, it, it really does matter for all those reasons that we're talking about. That, you know, it's, if we were ever, if we forget about talking for a moment in terms of like a public speaking, if we were meeting someone for the first time and they kept talking at us and didn't stop, one, it would just feel rude yeah, if right. they didn't interact with us. But also, if they were telling us something new, interesting, inspiring, trying to persuade us, give us information, mm. we would be just saying, oh, hold on a moment, I just need to process that. Or can I just check up with you something? We need time for our brains to process. So I think I would be endlessly reminding them of all the different reasons mm. it's not just about speaking slowly to speak slowly it's for the reasons that it makes the experience so much better for your audience and mm. then i think people begin to go okay and that the last one on is what you just said people feel uncomfortable with that yeah. silence i think i would get them to do a talk ask people to give them feedback and they'll probably go, that was perfect. And they'll go, didn't I pause a lot? Didn't it feel weird? And their audience will go, no, it was perfect. And I think mm. they just need to get that feedback. That's my yeah. thought. That was a long answer. Yeah, <laughs> so. It really makes sense, Miss Pause. So in case that we prepare to pause during our presentation already, but sometimes we feel a little bit nervous in our heart. It just being on the time. 
how can we go back to our presence and then we know we talk to ourselves that uh, this is the moment that we should pause because we already plan ahead you mean when someone when when you've started talking and you're kind of getting really fast and you you realize you need yeah, we, we are nervous and we just completely forgetting what we are about to pass, even though that we're playing ahead. Mm. So in this, how can we go back to the plane and continue pausing in your presentation? I think I've got a few answers to that. Mm -hmm. I think the first one is that we all know that mm -hmm. we might well be nervous. Sure. So so we try and avoid that nervousness. Mm -hmm by being incredibly well prepared and well practiced. If we are well prepared and well practiced and we know that what we want to say matters to us and to our audience, mm -hmm. then we will feel a little bit of nervousness, but a little bit of nervousness is good. It keeps us on our toes. So in that way, if we're prepared before, we mm -hmm. are taking responsibility for knowing we'll be nervous. Yeah. But there will be times, of course, Arne, that even if we're well prepared, something mm -hmm. will suddenly go wrong. Like I was even a little bit confused at the beginning when you suddenly disappeared, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think you told me what was happening and I, I started talking. So one will we'll be in situations where we'll feel a bit nervous. Mm -hmm. I think one way is to remind ourselves that we can just stop. Yeah. And then carry on like I did just now. Mm -hmm. And there have been times on where I have been really honest with my audience. So just pretend I was going a little bit too fast. And in my head, I'm acknowledging that, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness, I need to slow down. Mm -hmm. I might just, I'll try and demonstrate. Can I, I think I'll have to do it like a role play. Sure, so sure. I'm trying to go too fast and I suddenly realize I need to slow down. So I would pause and say, apologies, my dear audience. I was getting a little bit excited there. Let me just take a moment and say that last point again. Mm. So I would sort of take responsibility for knowing I, I use the word getting a bit excited. Perhaps it would be more likely that I was getting incredibly nervous, but I might not, I wouldn't say that to my audience. I don't think it's good when a speaker says, oh, I'm really, really nervous, blah, blah. I don't think that's professional. But I if think it is your credibility. It does, absolutely. So mm. I think it's much more useful to say something like, Oh, I was getting a little bit excited there because I'm passionate about this subject. I'll just take a moment and slow down and say mm -hmm. that again. And then I would be owning, I would be owning the situation mm -hmm. that had gone fast, but hopefully said it in a way that my audience would feel I was still being professional and doing doing a good job. That would mm -hmm. be and what would you do? So uh, let, let me confirm my understanding toward your point means that you will, whenever you are aware of your fast pace already, then you will be conscious to say to your audience that uh, I was so excited at that time. So let me slow down a bit and share with you my point. Well, I think that's one way, isn't it? I mean, the other way is to literally just suddenly think, oh no, I'm going too fast and stop. Mm. and then go slower but yeah. that might you which is fine if you feel you can do that but mm. i think maybe the other way is to slightly apologize to your audience or just yeah. to kind of put it out there but put it out there in the way for example you know if i was talking about harry potter i might be going oh i'm getting so excited about harry potter mm. forgive me i'll just slow down i always get excited about harry potter let me just tell you what I'm trying to say. Do you know what I mean? I'm slowing myself down, but yeah. also maybe apologizing to my audience who might be thinking, wow, she was a bit carried away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very useful, Miss Jo. For, for my way, I usually go to the audience at that time to ask them questions. And during the time that they answer my question, I'm going to go back to my breath and manage my pause one more time. Because mm. what, like, go back to your tip. One of the ways to pause is just to ask question. So it's yes. better to ask question at that time while you are nervous. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that let's come to uh, the last question, Miss Pause. You said earlier that pausing is potentially easy for a speaker. Can you say a bit more about this? Well, I suppose that goes back to the three groups. I mean, I, I, what I want to remind people is that in a way, 
Mm. Pausing is simple because all it is is stopping talking. Mm. I've just done a pause there. So I just want to remind people that in theory, pausing is very, very easy. But I think what can make it hard is if you're one of those people, and I am one of those people who actually naturally speaks very, very fast. So if you are one of those people, perhaps you need to really remind yourself about the benefits of pausing for you, the benefits of pausing for your audience, and mm -hmm. then you can have a much happier audience who will really enjoy what you're saying. Mm, I see. A very, very meaningful, Ms. Uh, Joe. I think that it's time for us to recap what we have been discussed today. So you share with us the importance of pause and some ways to pause. For example, that you can pause while you ask questions. You can pause whenever you're breathing and breathing, breathing in and breathing out or before an important point or after an important point. You can even create dramatic pauses in what you are saying. Those are some kinds of pauses that you may want to involve in your presentation. And Miss Paul, uh, Miss Cho, before we are... I love the name, I've become Miss Paul. I'm loving my new name. Because <laughs> right now I just remember you, uh, uh, that is pausing. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to, I love the name Miss Paul. Okay. It becomes your brain, your brain right now, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so before we finish our live stream session tonight, what is your final message to share with our viewer here? Well, <laughs> what would my final message be? I think I had one other quote I would love to. May I just pick up my piece of paper? Charles yeah. Debussy yeah. was a musician who wrote mm. a beautiful thing, and he had a beautiful quote. The music is not in the notes, but in the silence between. So I would just love to remind you all that the power of the pause, pausing in your public speaking, is so beneficial, potentially so easy. Please, my dear friends, do it. Yeah, very meaningful. And I got um, goosebumps when I heard that quote from you and uh, from the author. Miss Jo, thank you so much for joining the live stream section conducted by EIY. And I'm very grateful for that, that you spent time with us, even though that you just spent time with the TechX speakers just a few hours ago, but you still can join our live stream tonight. And hello, everyone. Yeah, we are going to have another live stream session next week. And whenever you would like to learn more about public speaking, leadership, and communication, just go to EIY page. We have many live stream sessions when we invite international speakers to join our session and share with you the global standard of our public speaking techniques. So once again, thank you so much, Ms. Jo. And Ms. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you, Ann. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. My name bye -bye. is Ann. <laughs> yeah.